So let's try this problem using superposition theorem. So here we have a circuit which contains two voltage sources. We have the 120 volt and then 60 volt. And then we have five resistors connected in the circuit. Now we are asked to find A, the value of I1 and I2 when the 120 volt source is deactivated. And then B, to find I1 when the two voltage sources are all in the circuit. So given a circuit which contains two or more sources, superposition theorem allows you to consider one of the sources at a time while you deactivate the other and then consider the second source while you deactivate the first. So that is exactly the idea we are going to carry in order to solve this problem. So for A, we are going to find the value of I1 and I2 when the 120 volt source is deactivated. So let's solve this problem together. Now to deactivate the 120 volt source, we are going to represent that with a short circuit because it's a voltage source. So we say that let 60 volt act alone. So rejoining the circuit, we have this to be the 6 ohms resistor. We also have this 6 ohms resistor. 3 ohms. Another 6 ohms. 7 ohms. And the voltage source, that's a 60 volts. So from the circuit given, you realize that I1 is basically the current or the total current produced by the 60 volt source when it is acting alone. So to find the value of I1, we basically need to find the total resistance for this circuit and then we divide the value of the voltage source by the total resistance for this circuit. So that will be the value of I1. So first of all, let's find the total resistance for this circuit. Now for this circuit, we have these two resistors connected in parallel and their combination will be in series with a 3 ohms resistor. So we are going to have something like this. We have the 7 ohms resistor. This is the 6. And then we are going to have the combination of these three resistors here. Now the combination of these three resistors will be in parallel with this 6 ohm resistor and the combination of that will be in series with this 7 ohms resistor. So we have 6 parallel 6, all plus 3, all parallel 6 and then all plus 7. So let's call that RT prime. So that is equal to 6 parallel 6 all plus 3 all parallel 6 and then plus 7 so let's simplify this now 6 parallel 6 is 3 so we have 3 plus 3 all parallel 6 and then all plus 7. 3 plus 3 is 6. And then 6 parallel 6 is 3. So that becomes 3 plus 7. And that is equal to 10 ohms. Therefore, the value of RT prime is equal to 10 ohms. So to find the value of I1, I1 is giving us the value of the voltage source, which is 60 divided by RT prime, which is 10. Now 60 divided by 10 is 6.0 amperes. So this is the value of I1, that is the total current produced by the 60 volts when it is acting alone. Now we are also asked to find I2 when the 120 volt source is also deactivated. 
So better still, we are going to find the value of this current, that is I2. Now to do so, we are going to expand the circuit. Now we have I1, which is 6 amperes, approaching this junction. Now if this is I1, we are going to have this resistor, which is 6 ohms. And then the combination of these three resistors. And from our calculation, you realize that the combination of these three resistors, that is 3, 6, and 6, is 6. So that is 3 plus 3. So that is 6. So we are going to have that here. So what this primarily means is that we have these two resistors connected in parallel. Now because the two resistors are of the same value, it means that the total current that is approaching this junction will be shared equally between these two resistors. So we have 3 amperes flowing in this branch and also 3 amperes flowing in that branch. Now since we are interested in the value of I2, let's focus on the current that is moving this way. So now we are going to split this 6 ohms resistor into 3, 6 and then 6. So we have this to be 3 ohms and then we have this 6 here and also this 6 here. So we have this to be 6 ohms and then 6 ohms and then we have 3 amperes approaching this junction. Because the two resistors have the same resistor value and they are connected in parallel, the current approaching this junction will be shared equally between the two resistors. So the total current approaching this junction is 3 amperes, therefore we have 1.5 amperes flowing in this direction and also 1.5 amperes flowing in that direction. So the current value of I2 is going to be 1.5 amperes, therefore we have I2 to be equal to 1.5 amperes. Now you can confirm this using the current division rule. Whichever way you do it, you are going to arrive at the same answer. So these are the values of I1 and then I2 when the 60 volt is acting alone or better still when the 120 volt source is deactivated. Now let's move on with B. We are going to find the value of I1 when the two voltage sources are all in the circuit. So to do so, first of all, we need to find the value of I1 when the 60 volt is acting alone and also the value of I1 when the 120 volt is acting alone and then we can add the two current values. Now, we've already found the current value I1 when the 60 volt is acting alone. So that is what we got to be 6.0 amperes. So let's say that that current I1 is the same as I1 prime and that is equal to 6.0 amperes. Now the reason why we are going to denote that as I1 prime is basically because we are going to find the value of I1 when the two voltage sources are acting alone. So basically this is the first one that is when the 60 volt is acting alone. Next we are going to find the value of I1 when the 120 volt source is acting alone. And then we are going to denote that as I1 prime prime and then we add the two current values. So let's consider the 120 volt acting alone. So we say that let 120 volt act alone. So we are going to deactivate this, that is the 60 volt source, we are going to represent that with a short circuit. Now let's redraw this circuit deactivating the 60 volt source.
okay so to find the value of i1 prime prime we first of all need to find the total resistance for this circuit notice that the total current produced by the 120 volt source when it is acting alone will be the total value of current for i2 notice that the original direction of i2 is moving this way however we are going to consider the current to flow from the positive terminal of the voltage source that is considering the conventional flow of current so instead of having the direction this way we are going to have the direction that way so that whatever current value that we get we are going to negate that current value so if this is i2 then we have this to be i1 notice the direction of the two currents i1 and i2 now let's find the total resistance for this circuit so that is given by rt prime prime and that is equal to now we have seven in parallel with six and then the two are in series with this three ohms resistor the combination of these three resistors are going to be in parallel with six and then all of that in series with six so we have seven parallel six plus three all parallel six and then all of that plus six now seven parallel six is 42 over 13 so we have plus three all parallel six plus six now 42 divided by 13 plus 3 is equal to 81 over 13 so we have rt prime prime which is 81 over 13 parallel 6 all plus 6 81 over 13 parallel 6 gives 162 divided by 53 and then plus 6 and then when you add the two resistor values you have 480 divided by 53 so this is the value of rt prime prime now let's find the value of current produced by the 120 volt source when it is acting alone so that is given by I2 equals 120 divided by 480 over 53. So we have I2 equals 120 divided by 480 over 53. And that is equal to 13.25 amperes now since we directed the current in the opposite direction then it means that we need to negate this value therefore the value of i2 is going to be negative 13.25 so how do we find the value of current flowing in this branch that is i1 prime prime so to do that we need to re-expand the circuit now we have i2 flowing in this direction we have i2 to be equal to negative 13.25 amperes and then we have these resistors that is the 6 ohm resistor and the combination of these three resistors connected at this node now the combination of these three resistors is 42 over 13 plus 3 which is 81 over 13 so we have this to be the 6 ohms resistor and then this to be the 81 over 13 combination resistor now let's find the current flowing through this branch so the current flowing through this branch is given by K 
current value 81 over 13 ohms is equal to now using the current division rule we have this resistor value that is 6 divided by the sum of the two resistors times the total value of current approaching the junction so that is negative 13.25 and that is equal to negative 6.5 amperes so we have negative 6.5 amperes flowing in this direction now to this junction we have these two resistors connected at this junction so we have the 6 ohms resistor and also the 7 ohms resistor Now the current that flows through this branch is the current I1 prime prime. So to find the value of current flowing in this branch, that is given by now using the current division rule, we have I1 prime prime equals the value of this resistor divided by the sum of the two resistors times the total value of current approaching this junction, which is negative 6.5 amperes. Now 6 divided by 13 times negative 6.5 gives negative 3. So we have I1 prime prime to be negative 3 amperes. Now since we are asked to find the value of I1 when the two voltage sources are all in the circuit, then we say that the value of I1 is equal to I1 prime plus I1 prime prime. Now we had the value of I1 prime to be 6 amperes. So we have 6 plus and the value of I1 prime prime to be negative 3. So 6 plus negative 3 is 3. Therefore we have the value of I1 to be 3 amperes. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.